Hey everyone, I'm back with another sewing pattern and this time it's a bottoms pattern. I present you the Bloomy Shorts pattern. They are obviously inspired by bloomers. I really enjoy some of the design feature of bloomers, but I don't necessarily love how they fit on me. So I wanted to create a shorts pattern that had some of those design features, like all of the gathered effect, but fit more like regular shorts. So I drafted the pattern to have some positive ease. So even though you have elastic all around your body, the elastic is not necessarily constricting you in any way. It's meant to fit close to your body, but not hugging your body, if that makes sense. I also drafted the pattern to come in different rise options, so you have high rise and mid rise. This is me from the future, I forgot to say a few things. Uh, the pattern is linked down below, you can find it in my store. Also, there's an hashtag on Instagram in case you want to have some inspo for your bloomy shorts, just go to hashtag bloomy shorts pattern. And I've also created a Pinterest board, so head over there if you're still unsure on how you want your bloomy shorts to turn out. I think that's everything, we can get on with it. My biggest challenge with this pattern was the construction because I didn't want to create the casings using bias type. So I went through some construction versions. I ended up going with a different construction where you create the casings using the fabric from the legs pattern pieces. I'll show you with some visuals so that you can see what the construction looks like. So you'll be creating the casings by folding the fabric following these fold lines and notches that you'll have on the pattern. So you'll have a fold and then you're going to sew on the right side with one centimeter seam allowance. I'm just going to create a little fold so that you can have a visual of what it will look like. So when you have the seam, what you'll have is, in this case the casings will be folded towards the bottom of the shorts but basically you will have a casing that's been created where you will insert the elastic. So you don't need any bias type, you don't need anything else. You're just going to cut the shorts and create the casings using the notches that have been given to you. I think that now that you have an understanding of how the casings are created, we can get into what materials you'll need to sew your bloomy shorts. Obviously the first thing that you need is your pattern. Which pattern file you're going to print depends on the rise option that you're going for and it also depends on the size you're making. From sizes 00, 0 to 16 you have one file and on sizes 18 through 30 you have a different file and that's because this pattern was drafted to not have side seams so you have the front and back leg together and that means that for sizes 18 and above the leg piece would be too wide to fit into a mainstream fabric width. So what I did was separate the front and back leg pieces. So I recommend that you go through the sewing instructions, that you look into the size guide and the garment measurements so that you can print whichever file works best for your requirements. Then you're going to need something to mark your fabric and you can use whichever option you prefer. I like tailor soap and heat erasable markers. You're obviously going to need some scissors, some measuring type, and then for actual notions, you're going to need 8mm wide braided elastic for the casings. You're going to need 20mm wide elastic for the waistband. You will need your fabric. On the instructions, I have recommendations for different types of fabric that you can use, but basically any lightweight fabric will work. Uh, I don't recommend that you use anything too thin, otherwise it will be see-through. And I don't recommend that you use anything that's a little bit on the thicker side because it won't gather well. And this one is also optional, but if you don't want to embroider the bottom edge yourself, you can get some 6 cm wide embroider trim so that you can skip that step. Or you can just skip the step of the bottom edge altogether if that's what you want to do. It's a design detail so you can include it or exclude it depending on the aesthetic that you're going for. Now that you have all of your materials you're going to prepare your printed pattern. I like to cut my margins to align the pieces and then I just tape them together. On the sewing instructions you have a printing layout for all of the versions so you can look at it to see how to align the pages. Once you have your pattern pieces you're going to cut your fabric and don't forget to mark all of your notches. The notches indicate where the folds for the casings will be and where to align the waistband so don't forget to do it. At this point it's much easier than doing it further in the process. Okay, now that you have an overall understanding of how the construction works, you have gathered your materials and your fabric is cut, 
We're ready to start the sewing process, which is actually the fun part, so let's do it. If your size is 18 or above, you'll have a different first step on this pattern, so you'll have to put the shorts front and back right sides facing and sew with one centimeter seam allowance and finish the seam and that will give you the same effect as the pattern piece for the remaining sizes so you'll have front and back all together and the same for the waistband this is the only different step everything else is the same for all sizes now when it comes to creating these fold lines for the casings you can either use a pattern piece, you can fold it along the fold line and then mark on the fabric that line or you can do like I do, which is this way so this is a pattern piece and you have each corresponding notch on each side of the crotch so you have one on this side and then you have the other on this side and what I like to do is to fold the fabric wrong sides together and I create a fold on one notch and I create another fold on the other notch and then I put it on the table and I press with the iron this way I don't have to do any markings I just use the notches to create the fold so then I bring it onto the table so as you can see I have the fold and I'm just going to grab the iron and press down the fold to create a crease in the fabric. Just repeat it for all the other folds. Again, just grab one notch on one side and the other notch on the other side and create a fold to then press and create a crease. Now we have all of our folds created for the casings that will be used in later steps but now let's start with step one which is hemming the shorts front and back pattern pieces and to do that we'll lay our fabric wrong side up and we're going to fold the bottom edge 0.5 centimeters twice to create a rolled hem. I am quite resistant to buying <laughs> sewing supplies so I have this little piece of cardboard that I just run a few seam allowances on and I'm going to use it to create the folds and now on to the second fold which will enclose the raw hedge Now we're going to do the same for both legs. Now we just have to bring it onto the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch right at the edge of the fold to create the hem. Now on to step two, we're going to create the embroidered edge. If you're having questions about which uh, raw edge you should embroider on, it's very easy to tell. You just lay the bottom edge pattern piece on top of your shorts and as you can see this way it won't match, so you have to place it this way. So this should be the part that will be embroidered. I really recommend that you try it on a test scrap so that you can see how your sewing machine behaves. I've sewn an embroidered trim before but I didn't save my settings so I'm going to try it out on scrap pieces of fabric so that I can see which settings I would like to use on this fabric specifically. So I just come here on my sewing machine settings and I just look for the embroidered edge that I'd like to use. On my case I would like to use this scalloped one. I have uh, three scalloped options and I think I've used this one before so I'm going to try it with the uh, original settings and then I'll see if I have to change anything to make it work better for this fabric. To sew on the embroidered edge you'll use one centimeter seam allowance. This may vary depending on the embroidery stitch that you're using but for this type of scalloped stitch one centimeter works well. So I'm going to place my foot down and I'm just going to sew and see if I need to make any changes.
Actually, it worked out pretty well on the first try, so I'm just going to iron this to see how it looks. Ironed it and I think that it looks pretty good. The hardest part about sewing this type of scalloped embroidery stitch is that if you pull the fabric, you can see that the scallop ends up being wider than it was when you're not pulling the fabric. So you have to keep an eye on it and try to let the sewing machine do most of the work. As you can see, there's a little bit of bunching up, but it's on the outside of the scallop, so this part will be cut out. As long as there isn't any puckering on the inside, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just going to use this setting on the bottom edge and I'll show you how it works out. As you can see, there are some spots where it isn't super consistent, like this scallop is much smaller than these ones. But keep in mind that the fabric will be gathered at the bottom, so it doesn't really matter, no one will notice, so don't be too harsh on yourself. If they don't all turn out the same size, no one cares. <laughs> now this part is kinda time consuming. You have to trim the seam allowance on the embroidered edge and you'll have to go around each scallop while cutting as close to the seam as you can without cutting the thread, otherwise the embroidered edge will come apart. Now that we have embroidered the bottom edge, we can attach it to the shorts front and back, and at the same time we will be creating the first casing. On the wrong side of the shorts, you will place the bottom edge right side up, making sure that the edge aligns with the fold and you're going to fold the edge up and pin in place. Now we're going to sew with one centimeter seam allowance at the edge of the first fold and this will not only create the casing for the elastic as it will attach the bottom edge to the shorts. Now we're going to do the same for all the folds, but for getting the bottom edge. So basically you will fold on the crease that's already been created and you will sew with one centimeter seam allowance. Once you're done with that, you'll move on to the next fold, then to the next and then to the last one. What we're going to do now is press all the folds towards the bottom of the shorts. I think it's easier to press on the wrong side just because you can press really close to the seam. So this is what they look like now. As you can see, the bottom edge detail looks really neat. It's fully enclosed inside the casing. All of the casings are ready to have the elastic inserted but before that we're going to attach the waistband facing. Now for the waistband the first thing we're going to do is fold one centimeter towards the wrong side and we're going to do the same for both waistband facings. Now we're going to attach the waistband facings to the shorts front and back. And to do that we'll place the shorts right side up and we'll match the waistband facing at the center notch and at the edges and pin it all the way. Now we're going to do the same for the other leg and then we're going to sew using one centimeter seam allowance. The waistband facing has been attached, we're going to press the seam up so that then we can understitch to keep the seam allowance in place. Now we'll get to the part where we're going to create this gathered effect on the shorts and to do that we're going to insert elastic onto each casing and I think this part is very well explained on the instructions so I'm going to show you. Basically for each casing you have a letter assigned 
and then you have a table of contents where you can find the letter of the casing and what measurement you need for that casing for each size. On this pattern, the pattern adjustments aren't made directly on the pattern pieces. For example, my waist is 76 centimeters and that puts me at a size 8, but my hips are 105 centimeters wide, so that puts me at a size 10. And that means that for the high rise casing and for the mid rise casing, I'll be using the elastic measurements for size 8 and for the remaining casings C, D and E I'll be using the elastic measurements for a size 10. If you're straight sized you'll just use the elastic measurements for that specific size on your whole project. So in my case I'm making the high rise version so for the waistband I have to locate where the high rise is and what's my size which is a size 8 for my waist. So that means that I'll be using this measurement and for the casings, since I'm making the high-rise version, I'll be using all the casings. When you're making just the mid-rise, you start at casing B, as you can see here. Mid-rise starts at B and high-rise starts at A because it's taller. So for the casings, I'll be using for A and B the casings that correspond to size 8, so these two. And for the remaining, I'll be using the ones that correspond to size 10, so these. The sewing instructions come with the elastic inventory, so it tells you how much of each measurement you need. For the casings you always need two, because you need one for each leg, and for the waistband you need just one. Let me cut the elastic. The waistband elastic will be used later in the project, so I'll just keep it to the side. Now I'm going to cut the elastic for the casings. Now we're going to insert all of the elastics into the casings, so this will be casing A, B, C, D and E. To insert my elastic I like to use a loop turner, I think that's what it's called. I think it's the fastest way to insert elastic. You can always use a pin like this, uh, just keep in mind that it cannot be more than one centimeter wide because that's the width of the casings. Things to keep in mind while fitting the elastic. I try my best to make sure that it's not turning around inside the casing, otherwise it will be more complicated further in the project. And I just push it until it matches the end of the fabric and I'm going to insert a pin to make sure that it doesn't run. And now I'm going to keep pulling the elastic inside the casing. Now I pull it until the, the other end of the fabric and I'm going to match it and insert a pin. As you can see the gathering isn't really even so what I do is pull on each side to distribute the elastic throughout the casing. Now that we have inserted all of the elastic, what we'll do as a next step is to stitch down the elastic at the edge and you're going to do this inside the seam allowance. So for the crotch seam, the seam allowance is one centimeter, so you have to use a smaller seam allowance to stitch the elastic down. I have loosely ironed it just so that you could get a better idea of what it looks like. You can see that the bottom embroidered edge is now peaking and it's all gathered, so like I told you, if your scallops aren't super even, no one will notice. We're going to do the same for the other leg, and then we'll move to the next step, which is top stitching all of these casings down. Now that we have both legs with the elastic inserted, we're going to top stitch all of the elastic casings. And if you don't want to top stitch at this point because you're unsure of how it will fit, you can totally do it at the end so that you can make any adjustment that you feel that you need to make. On the sewing instructions, I tell you to top stitch using a three step zigzag stitch, but you can just use a regular zigzag stitch if you want. I tell you the stitch length and stitch width. From my testers, I realized that not all sewing machines have the same unit of measurement for the stitches, so you have to take that into account. When I tell you six, this refers to six millimeters. I'll bring you over to the sewing machine. I like to lay down two or three stitches so that I can get it secure on the sewing machine and then we have to keep the fabric stretched while we're top stitching and make sure that there's no excess fabric where the fold is.
I like to pull it here and I like to push it at the back so that I can keep it straight on both sides while sewing. I think it gives you a better tension on the fabric. Now that you've top stitched, it's time for a press. And now we have two fully gathered legs and the shirts are finally starting to take shape. It's time to attach both legs and to do this you lay one of the leg pieces right sides up and you lay the other leg piece right side down and you're going to pin along the crotch seam which is this one and this one. So you're going to ignore the inseam of the legs. That will be sewn later. When you're pinning the crotch seam together, you have to make sure that the waistband seam should match. So you should place a pin there. And for the remaining crotch seam to align one leg piece with the other, you just have to match the elastic casings all the way down. I like to place a pin before the casing and after the casing just because it's less bulky. And now we're going to sew using one centimeter seam allowance all along the crotch seam. The next step is closing the inseam and to do that you're going to turn the shorts inside out and to align the inseam you're going to use the crotch seam and the elastic casings. To make it the least bulky you can make the seam allowances at the crotch face opposite directions. This way you won't have as much fabric overlapping. Then you're going to sew using 1cm seam allowance and you'll finish your seam using your preferred method. Now you're going to press the seam allowance towards the back of the shorts and you're going to top stitch the seam allowance in place. At this point we're almost done. We just have to fold the waistband facing towards the wrong side of the shorts. You're going to pin it in place all around. You'll be sewing using 2.5 cm seam allowance and you're going to leave a gap so that you can then insert the elastic inside the waistband facing. Now it's time to insert the elastic for the waistband which we had previously cut. Then you're going to overlap the two ends and you're going to sew it closed. There's lots of ways you can do this. I like to sew a square and then make an X inside the square. And lastly, close the opening on the waistband. And your bloomy shorts are done. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and that it made it as easy for you as possible to follow along the pattern. I would love to see your version of the bloomy shorts, so if you make them and you'd like to share them, you can just tag me on Instagram at CoolStitches and use the hashtag bloomy shorts pattern so that I can see your creation. If you did enjoy the tutorial, don't forget to subscribe because I'm planning on releasing more patterns. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye!